Welcome to a Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes. And I'm Kevin Bear. And we're here to discuss the last week in the world of Celtic. Kevin, a topsy-turvy week. It's been some week, eh? Yes. Uh, Best start to a domestic season in... Forever. Aye, for me. And then all of a sudden we're thrown into crisis and dismay after our performance and the result against Cluj. The Cluj game, eh? We kind of get lost in the hyperbole and the overreaching narrative for the Clues game, eh? We have to look at it as a, as that one game only. Take it over that 90 minutes. It was a game between two well-matched teams. Teams that won the trouble the latter stages of European football. We, us and Cluj were the same level. We had the same limitations as well. We were both great going forward and... We got had deficiencies in defence. Both teams had deficiencies in, in, in the defence area. Eh? The game was won by the, the smallest of margins. Eh? Game management on the night. Yeah. The Romanians had better game management than us on the night. And that's how we ended up at the Champions League. This wasn't a leg of Warsaw. This wasn't getting played off the park. We were, we were the same level as Cluj. Cluj were the same level as us. But the way that we went out, really really annoys it does, it does annoy three times we're in front in the tie yeah. three times we've got that tie in our own hands and we blow it mm. and pure and simple blow it after the game obviously everybody's going on about Peter Law lack of signings we didn't lose that game for what was happening in the stands we had enough on that pitch to win that game that night and Unfortunately for Neil Lennon and for those who support Neil Lennon and for the Celtic fans, it's the manager's fault that, mm-hmm. that, that we're facing a game against AIK Stockholm on this week. Yeah. See, when you've seen the team being announced, were you surprised at the lineup? I mean, I couldn't actually figure out what formation we were playing when i seen the team. That's always a complication, that, eh? When mm-hmm. you realise that you, you can't work out who's playing where. I went, I went for a 3-5-2. I think the majority of people yeah. went for a 3-5-2. Mm-hmm. The reason that I didn't think he would play a 3-5-2 is because they played three up front and it just doesn't match up. And you look at the way that we started again. It was a, an extremely poor first half. Mm-hmm. And you wonder, Lenny says in his press conference before the Dunfermline game that we started off as if Rodgers was still there. We started off at a slow pace. Um, so you wonder if the team were spooked by the lineup, by the tactical formation that Lennon was putting us out there, and eh? But Lennon was right. We played well in the first twenty five minutes of the second half. We we ripped them open mm-hmm. in that first twenty five minutes of the second half. We had pace, we had aggression, we we played well in the spaces. Edward, Ryan Christie had fantastic were fantastic in that twenty five minute period, but we opened them up. We needed a two-goal cushion. We never got it. And that penalty kick, that just gave them oxygen. As Lennon said, that gave them oxygen. That, that that showed our vulnerability. See, when you spoke about us coming out and playing like we, were, we played under Rodgers, do you think there's a resistance, Kevin, by a squad that was largely assembled and performed under Rodgers to play the new Lennon way? I think the squad maybe realised that we get overrun in the middle of the park with the amount of times that we turn over the ball, we try the risky passes, which I love. I'm a Celtic fan. I love going forward. I love attacking football. But we haven't go... I think Scott Brown's performance against Cluj was because he was overworked. Mm-hmm. He was on the left, he was on the right, he was back. He had he had to cover too much ground for a 34-year-old to try and cover in a top-level game. Because it, of the lack of support from McGregor, who's playing at left back. Correct. Cham bring, has got a different skill set to McGregor. Mm-hmm. McGregor's got a wee bit more energy and legs to sit alongside Brown. Cham hasn't got that. And I think the team were spooked. Hindsight's wonderful. But you can look at it now, and Brown's moment of madness, mm. I think, was down to the fact that he was done. He... he that, that's mental tiredness for me anyway that is mental tiredness because yeah, it's out of character isn't it mm-hmm. so I mean we're all disappointed hugely disappointed in the result as you say fine margins Kevin 
but uh, we had another game to pick ourselves up for against Dunfermline. Now, there's been highs and lows against Dunfermline over the years. What surprised me was I thought we had a fairly decent relationship with Dunfermline, despite the, the Chris Sutton comments when Jimmy Calderwood's team uh, were, were completely overrun by Rangers to give Rangers the, the league trophy. Um, I, I agree with Chris Sutton. I think a lot of Celtic fans and players who were in that team do as well. But I was astonished and disgusted at the outpouring of hate and bile for the Dunfermline fans. I'm no longer surprised. Um, it's a younger generation thing. Mm. It's a social media thing. You go on social media and you'll see Celtic fans getting called pedos by Dundee United fans, Aberdeen fans, Motherwell fans, Hearts fans, Hibs fans. It's a common now term for a Celtic fan. It's probably replaced Fenian as the, as the diography term for, for a Celtic fan. Over the last four years, the worst abuse I've had going to a football game has been by Aberdeen and Motherwell fans mm -hmm. at the two cup finals that, that we've played recently. Motherwell was, that was vile, really, really vile. And it really took me back, took, took me aback. But there, Motherwell took 13,000 to that cup final. There's a lot of them, never, I've never seen the inside of Fur Park. There's a lot of younger guys there full of the drink, just, it's, it's banter to them. And it's something that should not be. It needs to be stamped out by the individual clubs, doesn't it? Definitely, definitely. I remember uh, MacArthur, Ross MacArthur, who's the chairman of Dunfermline, coming out um, a couple of years ago now and calling it a West Coast problem. Well, it's not really, is it? When his fans from Dunfermline are coming out with the same kind of songbook. Definitely, and I'm, I'm sure Dunfermline will do the right thing and say, well, we'll take their fans to task mm -hmm. over it. The, um, I mean, they had quite a large support with them. I'm sure they had a number of day trippers as well. Celtic fans were um, giving them plaudits for that, for their level of support, the numbers that they, they brought to Celtic Park, and then they went and done that, you know. And they were also giving plaudits to the, the team performance. It was a resolute performance, you know. It was 10 men behind the ball. Um, let's talk about the performance as well, Kevin. Uh, after the Cluj game, you could remove the Cluj game. We started off well. But Saturday was a different story, wasn't it? Aye, it's a, a European hangover performance, eh? Mm. It's a performance in front of a low crowd, a crowd that's restless, a mardy crowd, mm, uh, if you will, eh? Who are going to hiss and boo every misplaced pass, very impatient. And again, even if you had won 4 5 nothing, I think we still would have, there still would have been moans. Mm -hmm. Just because of the general Neil Lennon Celtic have now had the first the first setback, the first setback that Neil Lennon can solely take the blame for, mm -hmm. and it's how we reacted to that. If we had went out and played well, folk would have went, "That's fine, we've reacted well yet." But it's only done firmly. We've we've got the game against Stockholm. That that's our most important game. But again, the team looked a bit shapeless. We relied on individuality to actually get us through the tie, which is a common theme in Neil Lennon's, Neil Lennon's teams. Yeah. He relies on individual players, individual talent. He gives them licence to go forward. Um, there wasn't a game plan. There didn't seem to be a game plan. And I'm sure everybody's seen the, the, the video clip it's gone about, which is probably... In, just before extra time, I think, mm -hmm. when the players look to be completely blanking him and he's walking about scratching his head. Literally. Um, at that point, you need your manager to manage. Mm -hmm. And have, have we got the balance right? Have, have, have we got the balance right in the coaching stuff? I've noticed Damien Duff doing a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, he's out in the touchline mode. He's got the, the tactics flipboard or what, whatever. I was talking to a guy who works in football and he told me that Carlos Ancelotti says a manager's only job is not to make sure that his team's demotivated and that's the only thing that he's got to get right. Mm -hmm. The question can be asked, was that team motivated for Saturday? 
the, the, Lennon's got previous. Yes. You know, taking cup ties seriously, mm-hmm. or the team being looking underprepared for cup ties. So, I always think, Kevin, um, these moments like you suggested there at the end of the game, going into the extra time period, there's very few moments that a manager can actually influence their players in a motivational sense uh, before the game, half time, obviously at 90 minutes if you're going into extra time. And it was one of the biggest things, I'm not comparing the teams or the managers, but the final game in 1970, Celtic came out of the traps for the first 10 minutes of every half, including extra time. And that's because of the Jockstein influence. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're looking at Lennon to be the, the commander there and get everybody and get all their attentions. But there were, and again, we don't know what was getting said, but there were people who were just turning their backs and walking away. Quite concerning. Were you concerned at any of the decisions in the team? Personally, um, I'm a bit dismayed that Sinclair is nowhere near that squad. He's a type of guy who could open up a Dunfermline pack defence on his day. And I know that last season maybe wasn't his best season. He was still productive. Um, what's your take on Sinclair? Clearly, Lennon doesn't fancy him. His form's dropped over the last 18 months. He had an explosive first season, but his form has dropped over the last 18 months. But he's got that experience. He, he gives you a job on that left-hand side. Our left-hand side's weak. It's the weakest part of the team now that we've lost Tierney and Sinclair. Two massive parts of an invincible treble yeah. and the treble treble one team. Gone out that left-hand side of the team. His skill set's invaluable. And let's not be about the bush here. Celtic are no good enough not to have Scott Sinclair on a match day squad. But what you've got to look at, has he been treated badly if he wants to move away for family reasons? He's never done it publicly. He's never came out publicly and says he wants away. You look at Olivier and Chan. Mm-hmm. He was extremely... He's been the opposite. He's been in the French paper saying he's too good for Scottish mm-hmm. football and he wants away. Disrespectful to the club, the fans, Lennon. But um, he's playing. Sinclair's not done that mm-hmm. at all. But he's playing. Yep. Chan's playing. Mm-hmm. So what's the difference between him and Sinclair? For Sinclair maybe saying privately, look, I want to go back down south. Mm-hmm. Now, his mentor's away, Rogers is away. He's won everything in Scottish football now. He's 30. He could just be looking at time. I've had my time here. Yeah, and family and reasons as well, Kevin. I mean, his wife, you know, she's got a career. Mm-hmm. And if it's time for him to go down south, that's great. And for what he's done, the Celtic fans, you know, will wave him down the road Definitely. and thank him for his contribution. But I always look at Sinclair as well. He's played centre-forward in his career. And he's an option. He's an option. That's why all, I actually thought we should have kept Lustig as an option at right back and centre half. Something you spoke to Alan at Celtic by numbers about. It was a great mm-hmm. point. You know, he covers two positions. Sinclair could cover two positions. Now, Lennon's playing Morgan, bringing him on, etc. I don't think Morgan contributes what Sinclair could contribute. So that, for me, is a, a slight concern if that has become a personal uh, issue and, and that's the reason why Sinclair's no playing. Um, see when that happens, when it's a part of your team, a part of a very successful team that's been together for three years and one of your teammates has been treated like that. Do you think that that can create issues or divisions between the manager and the other members of that team? I've got, I, I think professional football players know when a new manager comes in, he's going to fancy some players and not fancy other players. And players will fear for the future and other players will see it as an opportunity. I'm sure Lewis Morgan sees it as an opportunity and hopefully it's one that he can grasp. Mm-hmm. And I, I really like I really like to see him do well. He's become a bit of a scapegoat, him and Bolly Bolingoli as well. But if you've got so- Scott Sinclair there, he should be starting before Lewis Morgan. Mm-hmm. He sh- he's got more experience than Lewis Morgan. Could it cause a di- division? Yes, it probably could. You've got a guy there who's been in the trenches with the majority of that dressing room for three seasons, who's proved his, to be worth his weight in gold for those three seasons, and to be stuck out on a limb because of maybe internal politics we don't know is wrong. It's poor management. It's poor, poor asset management. It's poor squad management. It's poor man management, which in today's game is massive. Mm-hmm. Seven days is a long time uh, as a Celtic supporter, Kevin, so hopefully we'll be in a better mood the next time we look back on the last seven days. Thanks very much, Paul.